President Biden is set to meet with the leaders of Japan and South Korea at Camp David today. U.S. officials say the high-profile summit will deepen ties between the three nations when it comes to defense, technology, and economic cooperation. Let's bring in senior White House correspondent Selena Wang for more. And Selena, before we get into it, I want to say welcome to ABC News. This is their first time joining us. We're so happy to have you. That's right, Diane. It's my absolute first time. I'm so honored to be on the air with you. Can't wait for more. Welcome. All right, so let's get into it. Selena, this is the first ever standalone trilateral summit with Japan and South Korea. How significant is that? That's right, Diane. Even though these leaders have met before on the sidelines of other major international gatherings, the first time they're meeting for a standalone summit, it's also the first time that President Biden has convened leaders at Camp David. This is a symbolic place. It is a less formal venue than here at the White House. It's a place where they hope to forge these lasting friendships between the leaders of these three countries. It's a historic presidential retreat up in the woods of Maryland. Now, what we're really seeing here is two countries trying to move past decades of hostility, mutual distrust stemming from Japan's wartime colonial practices and history. South Korea and Japan may be close geographically, but it has been an extremely tense relationship, and U.S. officials are saying that this may be the high point in recent history for these two countries to come together. So what's at stake in today's meeting, and what can we expect to come from this? Now, U.S. officials are really framing this as a big diplomatic win for Biden to bring these leaders together and making good on his campaign promises to restore America's alliances. Now, they're expected to announce agreements around defense, security, economics, for instance, annual joint military exercises, intelligence sharing agreements, as well as a three-way hotline for these three countries to discuss during times of crises. Now, the concern here, however, for Japan and South Korea is that China is their biggest trading partner, and they do not want to antagonize such an important player in their sphere by being a part of this trilateral summit that the U.S. is hoping to make more formal and more reoccurring. So what message does this summit send to China and North Korea, and how are they expected to respond? Well, Diane, it's a really good question because, look, this is not a mutual defense agreement, but China already coming out in state media criticizing this as a mini NATO. U.S. officials, they're saying, look, no reason for China to overreact or get concerned, but inevitably Beijing is going to see this as another step in broader U.S. efforts to try and contain and isolate Beijing. Now, when it comes to North Korea, this is also going to anger the North Korean leader. In fact, South Korean media has reported that they believe North Korea may be launching an intercontinental ballistic missile timed to the start of the summit at Camp David. And key questions also lingering about this. Look, the leader of the U.S., of Japan and South Korea, they all face election cycles. What happens to the lasting ability of this partnership once when all these leaders change? And could this summit actually push North Korea, Russia, and China closer together. Diane. All right, Senior White House Correspondent Selena Wang. Thanks, Selena. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.